Um, but today our speaker is Dr. Michael Spiegel, and he is the Associate Professor of Theological Studies here at the seminary. Um, he teaches both systematic as well as historical theology, and he is the author, contributor, and uh, or editor of several books, articles, and essays. Uh, he and his wife, Stephanie, have three children, Sophie, Lucas, and Nathan. And I happen to, this is a very modest um, uh, bio here. Uh, I noticed that at the top it says assistant professor, and then in the text of it says associate. Associates make a lot more money, so I'm going to make you an associate today, <laughs> professor, okay? But uh, Dr. Hillman uh, is also an expert on the accordion. If you've never had his class, you need to be there. If things get a little slow during class, he just whips out the accordion and leads them in a German song. So, Dr. Spiegel, let's welcome him today. Thank you. No accordion for you. <laughs> Not today. When I was just a kid, I hung around with a good friend of mine from school. Uh, her name was Leanne. She had a younger sister named Jody, and they had a goat. And uh, look, when you're eight or nine years old, friends with goats, that's the thing, okay? <laughs> so one day, I'll never forget this. One day, we were feeding the goat, and I said, gosh, I'm really thirsty. you have anything to drink? Yeah, hold on. Jody, bring us a drink. Oh, I don't want to bring a drink. And she turns to her little sister and warns her with one word. Tubbly. And her sister jumps and runs and gets the drink and brings it back. I said, what the, what was that? Anyway, I just let it go. And we were playing a game later on. And it was time to clean up the game. I said, come on, let's clean up. Let's go do something else. Oh, no, Jody will clean up the game. Jody. Jody comes along. Yeah? Clean up this game. We're going to go watch TV. I don't want to. You clean up. Tubbly. She jumps up, she runs over, starts cleaning up the game. We're walking away, and I'm thinking, what? Leanne, what is this thing you keep saying? This to, oh, tabli. It means tell about last year. You see, last year we were at the grocery store, and Jody decided she was going to try to steal something. Well, she got caught. And the owner of the store caught her and, and gave her a warning and let her go, forgave her. But I told her that if she doesn't do everything I say, I'm going to tell our parents that she got caught shoplifting. And so as a little bit of a warning, a reminder of our little deal, uh, I just tell her, tabli, tell about last year. And so think about this. For God knows how long, Leanne was holding poor Jody's uh, accountable for this forgiven sin. The storekeeper had, account, had uh, forgiven her but she was held in slavery to this thing that she had done in the past. Every time she heard the word tabli, she was running in fear that she was going to be told on. And so this reminder kept her in a form of slavery. It was really awful. And uh, I thought, I've thought about that over the years many, many times, and I thought, you know, probably most of us, if not all of us, find ourselves in a similar predicament with regard to something from our past whether it's a shameful sin we committed, an addiction that we have overcome, uh, words or actions that we've done that constantly haunt us, just when we think that we're making some advance in the Christian life, we remind ourselves of this thing that we had to deal with back then. And it affects us. Maybe it's not something we did, but something that someone did to us. Some words they said to us, some way they hurt us. And even though we know and we've been told that it's not really our fault, we can't help but take some of the blame for it. And every time we think we've created some distance between us and that thing, between the past and the present, it tugs us back and reminds us of what an awful person we are. To bleed. You know, it's often Satan who uh, loves to remind us of the sins of our past. Uh, Revelation 12, 10 refers to the devil as the accuser of our brothers who accuses them day and night before God. It's a satanic thing to constantly pick apart and remind us of those sins that have been forgiven by the storekeeper. I don't think Leanne would like the fact that I was calling her satanic, but hey, you know, it was an illustration. You know, it doesn't take the devil to keep jerking our chain and tugging us back with these shackles of shame, 
we're really great at reminding ourselves of our own past sins, aren't we? Of our failings, our weaknesses, the shameful past, things we said and did. Maybe even just things we thought keep reminding us of how bad we are. They begin then to define us sometimes, to control us. Our thoughts, our decisions, our actions. No, I can't do that because, you know, last time I did that, this happened. Or that person can't really like me because I can't get in that relationship because I can't take that ministry position because and so these things are constantly holding they're like a chain from our present back into the past and it can only let us go so far they're like a shadow actually right have you ever uh, have you ever noticed you can never quite get rid of this thing look at this oh there it is I can't <laughs> it's always there isn't it there it is, you know. Remember Peter Pan lost his shadow once, had to get it sewed back on? We don't have that luxury. So some of these things in our past are constantly with us. You can't get rid of it. Actually, there's two ways you can get rid of a shadow. The first way, I would not advise it, all right? It's to immerse yourself in darkness. There's no shadows in the dark. That's because you're in one big fat shadow. You can't see your own shadow. Some of us, uh, some people do this. You will encounter people in ministry who do this. They can't seem to live with this. And so they immerse it with something dark. Whether it's just another addiction, whether it's just they give up. Or they just go back to that because it was easier living in it than living with the memory of it. Uh, but we were called out of the kingdom of darkness. This is not an option for us. The other way to get rid of a shadow, and you kind of just saw it happen here on the stage, didn't you? You turn to the light. When we fix our gaze on the light, we turn our back on the shadow. When we immerse ourselves in light, the shadow fades, it disappears. Now, you know, it's kind of still there, but it's a lot lighter. And I'm not looking at it. Okay, so you got the metaphor, I think. When it comes to the shadows of our, of our shame, of our past, of these sins that nag us, that are always there, that shadow us, that stalk us, what do we do? How do we look to the light? Like anything received in the Christian life, we receive it by faith. There's no other way to receive anything in the Christian life. By gazing intently on the brilliant light of, brilliant light of God's word, we appropriate these things, these truths, these promises that will help cause these shadows of sin and shame to dissipate. A couple of passages, and there are many, many, but I only have 10 minutes. So take a look at Psalm 103, 10 through 12. It's a promise to his people. It's a very important one that we ought not forget. Now, there are some saying, that's a promise to the Old Testament people. Wait a second. Chill out. Focus on this promise to his people. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. The shopkeeper is finished. Now look, let's all admit there are consequences to sin and things we've done in the past that sometimes are with us forever. If you uh, physically harm yourself permanently through some sin, that's with you forever. There sometimes are legal ramifications of sin that, that are kind of stuck with you. But as far as you and the shopkeeper are concerned, as far as you and God, those things are gone. He's dealt with us mercifully. Look at where it goes on. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. And if that doesn't, well, yeah, you know, in the ancient world they thought, okay, as far as the east is from the west, as far as left is from right, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. He's, as far as God's concerned, he's taken the shadow away. And Jeremiah 31, 34, the climax of the new covenant, for the new covenant people, he says, I will forgive their iniquity. And in case you don't know what that means, I will remember their sin no more. It's over. God's not bringing it up. Satan likes to bring it up. We like to bring it up. Our friends like to bring it up. 
but he's going to forgive our iniquity and remember our sin no more. The kind of promise of absolute forgiveness, total mercy, complete removal of our transgressions that he has for his people, he extends to us. This is the general truth. Now, we have to receive this by looking to the light. We receive it as we turn away from obsessing over this shadow that can really hold us back and distract us. It, it is still there, as you can see. But I'm not going to look at it. We're going to turn to the light, bask in his promises of mercy and grace, embrace his forgiveness and his steadfast love. So don't let the devil or yourself whisper their incessant to please. As we fix our gaze on the light, we turn our back on the shadow. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for your forgiveness, the mercy. This, these are renewed every morning, and when we're not, we need to turn our attention to them. Thank you for the promises and the constant articulation of the gospel that we have as we gather together, as we go to class, as we open your word, and we realize that all of our sins have been paid for, that you don't hold them against us, that you treat us as children and not as slaves. Father, we are thankful that through Christ and by your Spirit you have cleansed us, we removed our sin far from us. Help us, Father, to look to the light that we won't fixate and dwell on the shadows of our past, of the shame, of those things that we've said and done and thought that hold us back. And I pray that in this liberation we would be free to walk in the light and serve you with a new vigor and a new awareness of your mercy and grace. And we pray these things in Christ's name and by the Spirit. Amen.